Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as the One Hand Mechanic. If I can do it, you can too. Today we are working on a Husqvarna Z254F and it does not start. It only has, uh, I think it only has about 30 some hours on it. This is a, uh, turn the key on, this is 33 and a half hours. The gentleman's only had it for a few years. He told me that he put his jumper pack on it and it wouldn't start. And I said, did you have a battery charger? And he says, no, I don't have a battery charger, but I have a uh, jumper pack. So this is what it sounds like when you turn the key. Now, me just doing this business, I know right there it's a battery. But if you get absolutely nothing from the key, when you turn the key, like this, you get nothing. First thing you must do is make sure that these bars are all the way out to the side as far as they can go. Okay, and now we'll try it again. And we're back to the dead battery. If these handles are slightly in, just a little bit, you didn't even probably even notice that I put it, put the one in. They won't, nothing. I just push these in a little bit. Make sure that you push them all the way out. These have, they went to safety switches on the handles and also that's how they put the emergency brake on. I'm gonna show you underneath the seat here how this is, how this works. So when you flip your handles in and out, it has a safety switch here and a safety switch here. With the, as you can see, when you pull your handles in towards your body, the safety switch is actually, it has a little pin on it and you're not gonna be able to see that because it's hidden under here. I do, do not like this setup at all. But when you push the handle all the way out, what that does is that brings your safety switch into it. There's a little tab in here and these safety switches have a little piston on the front of them and they go in and out. If this is slightly off, this piston is out of the switch and it will not start. So you have to make sure that your handles are all the way out, both sides all the way out. You should be able to start this while it's while you're off the machine when your handles all way out. That means your emergency brake is on. We'll try it again. And there goes your clicking like it's a dead battery. Now I do know that underneath here, which there is a little, there's a screw here and there's a little clip here. You can't even see this, but underneath here, believe it or not, is your starter solenoid under here. So if you guys are looking for your starter solenoid, it's underneath here. But this is the battery. They really tuck these away now. And what I'm gonna do is show you a couple tools over here. If you own a tractor, you should own at least one or two of these. This is my high amp tr uh, jumper pack. This is for when I'm out on the road and I need to jump something that has a dead battery. This is 1700 peak amps. This thing will crank up a diesel truck. All right, you don't have to go that far, but don't buy those cheap little ones that think are gonna work, because they don't. I, obviously, this gentleman, I don't know what he has, but it's not working for him, his jumper pack. This is his typical multimeter. You can buy these on Amazon. I have a link down below. You can get them at Harbor Freight, Amazon, wherever. This is a battery charger here. I would definitely recommend if you own a tractor or something with a battery to have a battery charger, because then you can put the battery on charge and possibly get it back up and going. This only has 30 some hours on it, and that battery is dead. Now, they sit where I live, these batteries will sit for three to four months without being used. And normally you have to charge your batteries once a month in the winter time if you're not using them, and 99.9% .9 of us don't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the voltage at the battery, and if it's under 11, it's probably not good. You're gonna turn your DC, you're gonna turn to DC volts because this is a DC, 12 volt DC system. And you're just gonna to go to positive and then your negative. And we'll, and we'll read the, uh, we'll read what it says here. Okay, so we're gonna get, we're getting 9.98. All right, that's not good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna very carefully put my jumper pack in here. I don't like that uh, these terminals are real close. You don't wanna arc, you don't wanna have your wrench hit the positive and then any part of the metal on the frame because then you'll arc it and it's almost like welding. So you gotta really be careful about that. My jumper pack does not turn on until I turn it on, which is nice because then there's no voltage hanging out. And granted, this is very protected, very covered, very nice. So we're gonna go ahead and put the positive on. And then I'm gonna go ahead now. This is also gonna show up on my jumper pack. It's gonna show up the voltage of the battery when I connect the negative here. 
So if you look at my meter, it should show, this is 9.9. .9. Now when I turn mine on, now it's showing 12.1. All right, that's what my pack has in it right now, but this is about amperage. It's not really about voltage. It's about how much amps you have in there. Now let's see if this thing will crank. You should also always check your oil too. Let's go ahead and see if we'll start. Oh, there you go. Now this will probably start up. We'll see if it'll run. All right, so there you have it. And this gentleman said that he had a jumper pack and it did not work, it did not start. So in his head, he was thinking, okay, well, it's definitely not the battery. My jumper pack doesn't work. A lot of those generic jumper packs that are actually smaller, they don't have the, uh, they don't hold up very long. So even if you do, even if you do uh, charge them up, they don't, they don't hold their charge very long. So it's good to have a battery charger for backup. And what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna re we're gonna install a battery. Okay, so now we know that this is definitely a dead battery. They don't make it easy to get into the battery box at all. It used to be centered right there, which was nice. Now they have these emergency brake handle safety switch mechanisms here that I don't, I'm not real happy about. We're gonna go ahead and swap this out. So this is like a two part video. And I'm also gonna tell you a little tip on people buy the incorrect batteries, believe it or not. You think it's simple to buy a tractor battery? You got a 50-50 chance, whether or not you get the right one. So let's go ahead and I'll show you the tools that we're gonna need today to get that battery out. Okay, so batteries that we should need, and there may be a few here and there that I'm missing, but I think I got it pegged. You're gonna need a 7 16 socket, a half inch socket. You can use quarter inch or 3 8 whatever you have in your arsenal of tools. A small extension that I'm gonna use on my electric ratchet. A flathead, a small flathead screwdriver to unplug a couple things. Now here's where the battery is coming. People get a 50-50 chance for to get a battery. You can have, get the right battery. You can either have a left-hand battery or you can have a right-hand battery. And that, what that means is when the terminals are closest to your body, the battery, um, the positive is either on the left or it's on the right. Two different batteries are identical except they're switched, the, bit, the terminals are switched. So we have to make sure when you do take your battery out to go get a new battery, make sure you get the correct battery. And I'll also suggest 300 cold cranking amp battery or up. Um, that's gonna, especially with a lot of these twin cylinder engines, they need a little bit better of a boost. When you buy a machine brand new, they usually give you a better price on the machine because they cheapen up on the batteries. Let's go ahead and get started and uh, we'll get this battery out. Okay, so here's the battery now. It looks like a mess with these wires right here. So to make it easier for me, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the seat switch wire. I'm gonna also remove these two wires. Now you can't just pull them because they're clipped in with these little teeny tabs. Okay, so you just wanna, there's a little teeny clip on the outside. It's not much of a clip, but you wanna go ahead and just put your screwdriver in on that clip, pull out a little bit away from it, and then pull the plug. Now there's not a lot of clip to it, but it actually does work. Make sure, I mean, you, these will just sit off to the side. So when you lay the wiring back in, everything should just line up again. We're going to go back over to this side, uh, back over to this side. We're going to go over to this side and just pull this one out too. Pulls right out. This one up here, just a little gentle pry up on that, right? Like so. And then that should pull out. This tab right here breaks real easy. So be very careful. And then just going to pull this wiring off to the side. And then when you lay it back in, Usually it'll be, you'll, you'll be able to tell where, where everything goes. It, it doesn't get confused if you just lay it back. Okay, a little bit more space in here. The positive, you have to be careful when you take this off, just the done arcing. So we're gonna go ahead and take the negative off first. And I do believe that this is a half inch. Now they're using carriage bolts on the outside, on the back side of this from the factory. So I'm just gonna hold my arm behind that so they don't start to spin. And these are locking nuts. I actually like the non-locking nuts, and I don't like the fact that you have a carriage bolt, but because they li give us limited space back here, you can't even get a wrench back there. So the carriage bolt is probably the way to stay with it for this particular model. Okay, so we're gonna go over to this side. And I'm, I got lucky. I didn't really have enough space to get my arm in there, unless I get to the other side, but I got it off. I don't like the way that was sitting like that, but. All right, so this will come out of the way. Now I'm gonna put the uh, 
the 7 sixteenths. To get these off, I'm pretty sure they're 7 sixteenths. Yes. I'm just gonna pull it out to the end. I'm not gonna take it all the way off. Now it just fell down, and if you can see this, they're, they're hooks that hook into the sides down here. So I'm gonna try to just leave that down like that so I don't have to unhook them. If you can do that, and then pull your battery out. Just like this. All right, so the battery's out. Now I also wanna show you, oops, don't lose, don't lose your hardware like I just did. Got the hardware here, the other one here. Now this is April of 21. So it's only April of 23 right now. So this is only two years old. It's showing 230 cold cranking amps. That is not a very healthy battery as far as the amps in it. And this is a twin cylinder Kawasaki engine on this. So I would definitely recommend a higher cranking in battery. Like I said, they sell you less expensive batteries to keep the cost down on the machine. So don't expect these to last a whole lot. Uh, I, you can also just charge the battery up if you have a battery charger. You can charge the battery to get you by, but if it does, if it does um, not start week to week, it's not good for the charging system to, when you charge up the battery and it only lasts once a week, that means that the battery is draining as you're using it, which taxes the charging system on the engine, it is not good. So don't keep jump, jumping it or don't keep charging it week to week. Buy a new battery. And then also we're gonna show you that we can check the charging system to make sure it's running okay and make sure the charging system is working. As you can, as you know, this only had nine volts when it comes out. We're gonna put a brand new battery in. I'm gonna show you the voltage when we put the battery in and then the voltage when we also run the machine and show you the charging volts. Now let's go to the bench and see which one we need. Okay, so the terminals closest to me, positives on my left. So we need a, a this is a 10U1L, 300 cold cranking amps. The right one is a 10U1R. That just means right hand positive and left hand positive. This battery here is a left hand positive. So we're gonna go ahead and get this one. It's the left hand, we'll go ahead and put this in. Just gonna slide it down just the way we got the other one out. Just like that. I'm gonna pull this up like that. And it just goes right over the edge of the battery. Now you have to be careful. They have a cutout right here in the metal part and they, they I guess they want that to be between the battery posts. You don't want the metal contacting the posts, especially the positive. Even though this metal is painted, don't trust it. You can arc it. So when you tighten these up, make sure that these edges are between the posts. And I'm just gonna hold it there and then get my electric ratchet to see if we can just tighten these up. Now, I have a feel for how tight they go before I stop wrenching on them. I can feel them getting snug, and you don't want to over tighten it if you're using the electric ratchet. So if you use a manual handheld ratchet, it's gonna give you more of a feel, but that's nice and snug. We're gonna leave that go like that. I'm gonna hook up my positive. All right. There we go, that's much better. All right, I'll go ahead and do the negative. Put the nut on. Again, I'm, since it is a carriage bolt, I'm gonna hold hold the back end of it. Tighten it up. Okay, we're tight. And we're gonna go ahead and throw the electrical connections. The big green one goes up on the seat, clips right in. Snaps it in. This guy goes on this side. Safety switch. This guy goes on this side. Safety switch. Make sure they're in. Okay, that should be it. Let's go ahead and see if it'll crank up. Okay, now I did want to show you, I'm going to show you the charging system voltage. As we're sitting with no no crank or sitting it sitting alone not running we have just so you can see this here 
we have 1257 okay now this is a fully charged battery we just ran it so it might be down a little bit but that should go up when we start the machine so I'm gonna go ahead and start it. You won't be able to hear me, but I'm gonna go ahead and put terms back on. We'll read it and see what it's up to. Should be somewhere around 13.5, 14.5 volts. As you can see, I started that at idle and I checked it at idle. It didn't come up much. You have to run them about, you know, a little bit off idle, half throttle to full speed. When you're running full speed in your yard, you're cutting grass, it's gonna charge just fine. It was charging at like 14.7. So that pretty much sums it up for how to diagnose a no start condition on a Husqvarna and how to install the battery. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I do appreciate everybody watching my video. Please subscribe, tell your friends about my channel, and I will catch you guys on the next one.